Local 44 Morning Brew, local news that matters. At this place in history, we're in Brandon with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. Steve, what are we doing here in Brandon? So we're standing outside what's now called the Howe Block in Brandon. It was named after the Howe Scale Company, made by the Brandon Manufacturing Company. Really big employer here in Brandon. It became internationally known for their scales and their great innovation on scales. Ultimately, the company moved to Rutland. So we're going to head down the road a bit and learn more about this company. Let's start with an easy one. What is a Howe scale and what makes it so special? Well, Howe scale made all kinds of scales and uh, for weighing airplanes, grain bags for newborn babies, uh, trains, trucks, and they developed what they call a beam that had a sharp edge on it, a piece, and then they, they rotated the, the, the lever on that so that there was no friction and could get accurate measurement. And then they just had levers that they developed and transferred the weights up to a dial, like a ruler. And uh, they, the most accurate scale in the world at the time, it was built in the 1800s. So talk more about the types of scales, because we have a, a wide variety here behind us. Well, yeah, you have a, right here, you've got a, a doctor scale right here, and then you've got a grocery store scale, you've got a, a scale here that's used for higher precision stuff in uh, manufacturing. And they developed a plant in Brandon, and they made scales there for about 30 years. A few businessmen came uh, from Rutland to Brandon to see if they could purchase the company, move to Rutland, and negotiation lasted about a year or so, and the town voted down, or the people did, not to put up some money to keep the skill works in Brandon, and it moved to Rutland in about 1870. And Brandon's taken 100 years to recover from that move, but they, Brandon's coming back very well now. So Brandon, they had lots of great water power from the falls on the Neshobe into the Otter, but there was no rail connection. The, 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 what did they gain here the, the in The railroad, the rail connection was the thing. The railroad is on both sides of this thing. It also ran tracks right through the middle of it. These scales, when you put together, these are small ones. The bigger ones, they weighed a lot of weight. And they had a shipping all over the world, all over the country, they did by rail back then. It's my understanding that the scales were so famous that they showed at the Great Paris Exhibition. Yes, When they the did. Eiffel Tower was, was unveiled. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and their big competitor, Fairbanks, was there. The, they were too. there, yeah. Yep. Fair, yeah Fairbanks, Morris, Fairbanks, Morris, and uh, St. Johnsbury, and Howe were, Howe were big competitors. They were very competitive. Mm -hmm. They were also competitive that I'm not sure they even talked to each other sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Both scale companies had scales set up at the Centennial Exhibition in Philadelphia, but Howes was the one that was working, and President Grant came. That's great. And was weighed with the Howes scale. The Howes scale, there's a picture. But not on the Fairbanks that, scale. Not, that's yeah. correct. That, that, was a coup, that was a coup for Rutland. And they went out of business in 1982. What were, what were some of the contributing factors for the well, the, the, market, the, the market changed. Uh, they got bought out by multi, uh, multi different corporations. They didn't advance the technology. They didn't, there was no research and development to stay here, to stay ahead of it, you know, and then in business, you got to be very competitive and if not, somebody else is going to take your business and they lost a lot of business to other competitors. At this place in history. You're watching Local 44 Morning Brew, local news that matters.